designing the content of your form is only half of what you have to do before you send it out to the public. So up here is a gear that says settings. When you click settings, let's take a look at all of the options that you need to configure before you send this out. In the general tab is a box to collect email addresses. Uh, this is very handy, especially if you forget to include a first name, last name field on your form. And then you get all these responses and you don't know who actually said what. So if you choose this, it will collect that. The response receipts will send, as the question box says, any respondents will receive a copy of what they answered on the form. That's kind of nice if you're having people sign up for workshops and you want them to remember what they signed up for. So I'll check off response receipts and then uh, at this point I tend to use always uh, because a lot of times when people see the respondent request they're not sure exactly what that is and they might decline so I just send them a receipt always. If you require the sign-in, all that this is saying is that anyone in our existing school district, staff, student, um, administration who has a McGuanagall Google account, that in order to see the survey, they must be signed into that McGuanagall Google account. So if you send out a survey and people ask you, well, I can't get into it, it's very possible that's because they're logged into a personal Google account and they would have to log out and log back into their school account. But this prevents anyone um, outside of the school district from answering the form and maybe tampering with your results. Limit to one response, that's pretty obvious. And the last two, whether or not after they submit the form, what you can give them editing rights if they want to change their answers, or if you want them to see the progress of how other people have answered, you can allow them, if you wish, to see a summary of how the overall survey is going. And there can be any number of reasons why you want to turn that on or off. So that's in the general. The presentation, the progress bar would be if you have a multi-page form, it lets them know you're 40% done, 50% done. Shuffle the question order is nice if you're using forms for quizzes. And then if it's a form where people can submit multiple forms, like maybe they, they want to nominate someone for an award and they have several people they wish to nominate, this way when they click submit, it will show them a link to submit yet another form if they want to do it all over again. And finally, the confirmation message is nice because when people take surveys or forms, they often want to know after they click submit what you're going to be doing with those results. So this is a great place to put a thank you message. Uh, we'll be sharing the results at next week's meeting. Anything that gives them an idea of what's going to happen next. And then finally, the quizzes. This is a new tool uh, this year in Google Forms that teachers can use the Google Forms tool to actually make a graded quiz. Now there are separate videos that actually teach you how to configure these items. So I'm not gonna get into that here, but just know that if you're going to use Google Forms for an official self-graded quiz, you will need to learn how to configure this box or this screen right here. So then after you've configured these three areas, you can click Save. 